Hello everyone, how you doing? I'm HexDSL and I want to talk to you about Biomutant because I've played a lot of Biomutant now. I've played seven hours, which is not a lot, granted, but I've played seven hours in like two days and I really like Biomutant, which is a shock because Biomutant actually gets mixed reviews over on Steam. For whatever reason, it gets mixed reviews and then I, I, will, I think I know the reasons actually. Um, but yeah, mixed reviews, right, which is interesting. THQ Nordic and the publisher, it's this little... This little developer that's got like 20 20 employees i think maybe wrong that someone told me that i didn't fact check i played seven hours of it and you know get it's 55 fucking quid which is ludicrous amount of money for a game um there was something about this game that i kept looking at and going ah oh, it does look fucking great it does look fucking great and like there was a few things about it, like the cute aesthetic the interesting world that's all colorful not boring as shit like most games um this like sense of openness it, it portrays in all the screenshots and there's just weird shit you see and i was like yeah i need to i need to experience this uh, and i did and the reason i haven't loaded the game yet is because i want to get to another point shortly um essentially the game is now i was thinking i was playing it i was like i really like this and it reminds me of something but i can't quite remember what i can't quite figure out what it reminds me of then i realized this is animal themed kingdoms of amalar i didn't realize it until like literally like well, seven hours in before I, I was like, it's Kingdoms of Amalar. But yeah, it's literally Kingdoms of Amalar. Like, like, there's, there's, like each area is divided into like a, into like a, its own little hub area, and you go through as as a fairly silent protagonist, and and people give you quests for reasons. You do them, and you're the chosen one, but not really, you know. Uh, and then you go through, and, and you you progress through the area. And I keep hitting my mic, and you progress through the world outwards and you have more and more access to stuff and then crafting becomes more important as you get further into the game there are bosses that aren't really major but they're there if you want to get to them and they're also weird quests and stuff the whole game because king of amalar vibe i didn't realize until after i'd played like seven hours and like i said that was really weird to me because it, it was just the king of amalar feel is like obfuscated underneath this uh beautifully crafted world and in many ways it's a better game than kings of amalar but it lacks the earnestness of kings of amalar kings of amalar is like like kind of just like out there right it's just one of those games that's like it, it really knows what it is and it capitalizes on things it is where biomutant isn't quite as clear on what it is or why it is what it is and that's a shame because i think that what lets it down a little bit that said love it i just burped a little bit like in my th throat burp anyway you didn't need to know that uh the game is it's just great. It just really is good. But uh, before we start, I have a few things to say. Before we start the game, that is, the video has been on for 2 minutes 53 seconds. Uh, the game is fifty four ninety nine. That is a stupid amount of money. That is too much money for this game, in my opinion. It would have been, I feel like like if it had been like 35 quid, that would have been a much more reasonable price. But to make it 55 quid, it's that's too much money. And I did buy it with my own cash. It's not like I'll get any magic YouTuber discount here. I was like, all right, let's do it. Let's, let's fucking, I'm curious enough, let's do it. I didn't buy it here though. I bought it over on the Humble Bundle. Um, go to humblebundle.com and you, and you type in, and you type in, Get Surviving Mars Deluxe Free. Cool, might actually do that. Uh, you type in Biomutant. Uh, bio there you go. Uh, because of my discounts on Humble Bundle, I got it for 43, which I still think is about a 10 or more than I would expect to pay. Like, just looks alone. Okay, now I've played it. I'm like, I feel like 34 would have been way more reasonable, which is ironically the price of Kingdoms of Amalar. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, that's beside the point. And value is always subjective, and it depends what you think it's worth. And this is just my opinion. It's the game is how much i feel like it should have cost but again just you know my opinion i get extra i get 20 percent off because of a humble choices subscriber which is what took it down to the 43 so that was nice and it made it a little bit more palatable the only downside is if you bought on humble it's not as easy to refund like you can on steam right you can't do that so it's more locked in forever i could have bought it on steam then played it and refunded it and bought it somewhere else cheaper in a month's time i didn't i bought it from there i just was like fuck it we'll do this um and the other thing i wanted to point out here this game is a proton platinum this is what's wrong with proton and I, I bang on about this a lot there's a lot this is not platinum for a start you've got to add this to get the sound to not crackle i haven't actually had that personally but people are reporting that and you have to use glorious egg rolls spin of proton in order to make it work uh properly they say um and there are some bugs with performance and you know there are some vulcan loader things you can do and there's yeah there's a lot of fucking stuff right um yeah 
we'll we'll sort of talk about that. But this is Platinum, apparently, according to Proton DB. It's it's not though. It really annoys me because if they was just more honest about these ratings, and I don't know, it's not Proton DB's fault. It's the people reviewing it. If people was a bit more realistic with their assertions, we wouldn't have a bad rep. Because to me, Platinum, oh fucking source. Platinum means that we have to. Uh, platinum means that I hit play and that's it, and we're good to go with DTF. But no, apparently not. Apparently, you have to fuck around. But. Um, I'm currently, I couldn't only get this working on my system with an AMD graphics card and AMD CPU, not CPU matters, with Proton Experimental. I want to launch it. Let's, uh, let's launch it now because I've got a pad in my hand and I'm ready to go. When you launch it here, you see, uh, you see some stuff instantly that goes, that's not, that's not platinum. That's, there you go. That's not fucking platinum. That's not in desired fucking game. That's not what they intended, was it? Nonsense. Not fucking platinum. That's the game intro logos are doing that as well. And you just skip past it and eventually just loads in. Um, yeah, there's a few things on ProtonDB to sort that. It just turns that into a black screen instead or a transparency or some shit. There's some stuff to sort it out. But yeah, annoying as shit. And, I, and it does it in-game as well, which I'll show you. There you go. Some more of that in-game. There we go. Biomutant here. We're finally here now. We can we can skip that. We can skip that. And then, but you'll notice I've got a PlayStation controller. It doesn't auto detect my PlayStation controller, but it gives me the ability to choose my own icons, Welcome which is nice. To Bio Mutant. So, first of all, let's go through the settings a little bit. I should also flip over to Game Capture as well now, so we don't get any nasty tearing. So, boop. I know you didn't see anything, but trust me, I already have it set up because I'm smart. I'm getting good at YouTube. Um, so you've got some camera options. I've got my field of view 95 fields enough. Turn my motion blur down to zero. Camera shake, that was just default. Fine. Depth of field. I like depth of field. Nice. Then you turn that on. And then controls. If you go all the way down here, you can go DualShock 4 or Xbox One. And it instantly changes. You can see the tabs change at the top there. I like that. I'm a fan of that. Just don't try and auto detect. Just let me choose. Volume is nonsense. You can turn down the, uh, you can turn down the uh, narrator a lot as well, and the gibberish can be turned down as well, which I like both of them. I left them both on standard. I like the narrator. We'll talk about that in a minute, though. Uh, put it on borderless at 1080, because I'm currently in 1080, because I'm currently recording a video, and that's, that's how I record my videos. Um, Sharpening's turned on, frame limiter, and there is a separate thing where you can turn off, I think it's in post-process, I think you can turn off motion blur, which I... Feel like I should have on. I should have that somewhere. Is it not there? Is it not? Okay, there's definitely a motion blur solid somewhere because I've I've already fucked with it. But I was messing about settings, so maybe maybe it's come back on again. I don't know. Where is it? Who knows? I'll, there's definitely one in here. Anyway, it's not the point. We'll carry on. Uh, mappings. You can customize your controls, even a controller, which is really nice because a lot of games go controller. We decide. But to be honest, the controls are fine. Don't need to do that. And there is accessibility here as well, which is nice. That lets you tinker with things. Always good accessibility options. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll continue my game show. We continue this. I'm level ten, and I've got six hours fifteen minutes on this save game. Apparently, I died a lot. I guess that doesn't count the deaths. Um, yeah, must have died like you know ten minutes worth. I guess. Bit of loading now. This is coming off an NVMe, so this is a slow loader. Um, this you know yeah. I play this is on GeForce now as well. If you want to play on GeForce now, it's on there as well. This is my little fella. And my little fella is very cool. And you'll notice it looks nice enough. It runs at like 70 frames a second. Uh, the frame rate can tank a little bit when I get too close. If I get too close to a... Uh, oh, there you go. Perfect. The shrine. Take it. We'll pray our shrine and we get free points. Yeah, we've got some points for the shrine. Don't know what they are. We get paid for them. And the world is filled with weird creatures, but not overfilled. You can explore the world nicely without getting mixed up. Into, without... without Without, like a lot of these open world games, right? You'll play and you'll be like covered in things to kill after every two steps. In this one, pretty far between. It's quite easy to avoid combat if you want to. And I've got this ridiculous sword thing here, which nicely doesn't clip through the floor either. It's like it's like it's nice. It doesn't do any stupid clipping stuff. So they've sorted that out nice. Oh, okay. It does it does? I think usually I don't notice it clipping. It does clip, but then we can pull that out and do some crazy swinging and stuff. Don't forget though, we can also use our superpowers. Um, we've got superpowers, and we can do a bit of that, and we can do a bit of, a bit of that poison thing, and we can also do, oh, we can also, I've got that, fucking cool that is, we can do all this cool shit, also, did I mention guns, we got guns, yep, pretty cool, right, uh, yeah, and, uh, We've uh, we've got we, we've got this, this system here where you can press up and choose a healing item, or you can press left and choose a uh, choose a weapon type, or you can press right and choose a melee weapon. One of the melee weapons you got is a really big fist that you can just swing at things, and you can charge up your fist. 
and do a lot of rocket punches, which is ludicrous, and I love it. Um, the game, you got this little electric fist as well, which is a bit, yeah, I don't, I don't really like. I've got a big fucking sword. Why would I not? You know. Um, also, if you want, you, you, you can sometimes there are big robot mechs you can summon, or there's just you know a weird goat you can ride, which is which is weird because you can shoot while you're on the goat, right? You can you can do shooting and stuff while you're on the goat, which is fine. But like, I feel like it's going in slow motion, and I fucking hate it. I, I don't ride it. This is the goat at top speed, right? Okay. Now let me get off the goat. I'm going to drop down to all fours and run this faster than that. About you. So I don't, Whether yeah, I don't get it. Fail, uh, and the narrator there, you can probably hear. I don't know if you can hear the narrator. I don't know my volumes are. He's got this children's TV voice, like he's narrating Pingu or something, you know? Um, I feel like he's the Mr. Ben narrator or some shit. Um, I think it's the voice actor from, um, I think it's the same voice actor that did the narration in, uh, in what was that game where you get to shoot all different ways? Oh my God, I forgot the name of the game. Uh. Yeah, the stingy store. Oh my god, my brain has just died. Anyway, that one with the offices, and you get to walk around the creepy office. I can't remember what it's called. Um, Paradox? Something Paradox? No, anyway, gone. Anyway, it doesn't matter. His narrator's been around for a while anyway. People rec people recognize the voice. Um, graphically, it doesn't really do any... I've had one hard crash because of Proton, where I tried to equip an ability, and the game just fucking froze and just wouldn't let me do it. So I fired up GeForce now. I load the game in GeForce now. My save game is there thanks to Steam. And I just did that there and then it was fine. And sometimes I'll get this thing where it'll say, congratulations. They're like, yeah, they'll put that stupid test card behind it. So I'm going to look at how to fix the test card. It seems to be an AMD thing, not an Intel, not a, not an Intel, not a, uh, not a thing on NVIDIA cards, which is a shame because that's the reason we've got Platinum because I feel like you should just get different reviews for AMD and NVIDIA. It'll just be different things. There is a fast travel system over here as well. We can use that and that. Then we can use that and we can go see. and that and we can see the world from here and place waypoints and do fast travel. Never fast travel. Don't have to use the fast travel system, not interested. There was a boss fight over here that I did that was cool as fuck. I did the boss fight. And now I'm planning on doing all these side quests in this area here. And then slowly spreading over. I'm probably gonna go north because I mean I want to see what's north. Um I just saw some things at the edge of here and I thought that's cool. I want to check that out. I'm gonna go north here and the next boss over here. And then there's another boss over here. And another boss here. And that reminds me of Zelda having four bosses. You know where they are from the start with something in the middle to, to do. That mean that's very reminiscent of Zelda. And I mean that complimentary. They've taken the right messages from Zelda, not weapon fucking degradation and shit. Um yeah, it's this nice map. It's nice. It's got this weird brush look to it. I like it. It's nice. And it's it's very clear as well. Like you can actually recognize things from this view, which is really cool. The fuck is that giant man? Oh, that's that man. He's not a giant man, he's just that's just telling you where the fella is. He's not actually a giant man. He's a normal size. Well, he's a bit taller than me. Uh, because also, what's not coming across here is I'm a little tiny squirrel man. I'm a little tiny squirrel boy, right? Yeah? Little tiny squirrel boy, me. I, uh, you don't realize how small you are. And if you look, and I think, like, you can't really get a sense of it. But I'm like, I get the, the impression I'm about three foot tall. tall. And sometimes I'll see, like, artifacts in the old world, like doors that are left over and vans and stuff. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm fucking tiny. There we go. So this is a shop. So this is like a book, like a magazine shelf. You can see I'm like I'm like a three year old's height, which is cool. And like that I should be you know, in any other game you'd be towering above it. Um they've done a really nice job there because sometimes you see it oh, there you go, the counter gives you an idea of how tall I am. That should be waist height to a human, it's above my head. Um and there are humans in this game either. There are no there are no, can I break that glass? Can't break the glass, never tried before though. Wait, maybe I can zap the glass. Nope, can't break the glass. I can probably oh, this is good. Nope, didn't blow it up. Nice. Oh, and these, these, tra these trash things, I don't know who makes them or where they come from, but these, they're scrap things, and you, you kill them, and you get you get some de pretty decent scrap out there. Scrap is the crafty material that you use in the game. Um, and yeah, you basically just have a good old time being a little squirrel fella, doing magic and shit, and exploring the world. And there's another post there. Look at that post. Let's see. Oh, I've already got that one. I thought it was a new one. It's not a new one. Oh, I've been here. I remember here. And there is, oh, this is a dead zone out here, which you mean I can't get the oxygen. You'll see I'm getting hyperproxia here. Hyperproxia. That means I can summon my mech. And my mech lands. There you go. I can get in my mech. And then my mech's got his own oxygen tank. And now I'm in a fucking mech, which seems to be made of parts of ca old car parts. Which in itself is very fucking cool, right? Just old car part mech. Um, yeah, it's cool. Very awesome. I like that a lot. I enjoy it. And you got guns on your mech, um, as well as some of the tricks it can do. But uh, you know, straight out, straight out the ladder, and I fucked it up. It would look cool. 
And you just ignore the mech now, you just wander off and you can call the mech next time you're in a dead zone. If you're outside a dead zone, you can't call the mech. I haven't quite figured out the narrative reason why you, 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 know, you can't call the mech outside of, outside of an oxygen-free zone. I guess there's a reason if I had been paying more attention. Uh, the point of contention about the game, uh, one of the points of contention about the game is the narrator. People really don't like the narrator, which is odd because I really think he's cool. I think he sounds awesome, right? But people fucking hate him. That's a shame. The little fellas here, look, little fellas here, they're just queuing up doing shit. I'm, I'm allied with their enemies, or I could attack them. But, you know, I'll come back and figure this out later. Uh, and there's a little, well, that, that's the enemy encampment. And again, the enemies, is, it's like, they call they refer to it as a gentle war, which I think is cute. Um, but again, this is kind of the, the, the cuteness is, the narrator might annoy some people, I love him. I think the fact that he sounds like a children's TV presenter is just superb and tonally. I think it really just fits fits the game well. Um, but I can understand why people don't like him. I love him, and I'm not turning him off. Also, the comic book effects. If I if I shoot my gun a lot, and I run out of ammo, I get this clack, 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 sense how I'm out of ammo. People hate the comic book effects, and it comes up with a few different things. I'm, again, I like them. I think they're cool. Um, but uh, that's the interesting thing about this game. People take away different stuff. For me, the visuals are beautiful and interesting and strong, and I'm about to die in oil because animals can't grow in oil. Um, another thing people don't like is the preachiness of the game. The game's set in a post-apocalypse, and by that I mean the world of humans is over. Everything here is left over, and at least a couple of generations has gone by um, before we uh, we animals took over, and now the animal society is just like, it's just the world for them, right? It's just the normal, the, this normal status quo for them. They live in a world that is made of the remains of an old world, and they're quite cool with that, and they, don't, and they, they say things about the humans and their toxicity. So it seems like, and I guess the game, as the plot goes on, we'll find out more. It seems like the Earth was destroyed by pollution. And it's coming out of the other side of that now because the humans aren't there to keep fucking things up. And that's where the animals have come and the mutations that gave birth to them seem to be caused by the pollution that destroyed the humans. But they're grateful and they're happy enough with it. But they've got this uh, whole society of very communist society, where you, the very communistic society, should probably say, where everything seems to be just, you know, just live off the land and take what you need. Um also the uh also the oh, sorry an email that it distracted me thankfully i'm capturing the right thing you didn't ask for the pop-up which is smart for me for once um and also there's this whole thing about why would the humans treat the world this way it's stupid and it's like yeah obviously it's stupid they're dumb humans are dumb you know they deal in all this pollution because they're stupid and don't respect the planet and like recycling is a standard thing that's why the that's why the stacks are about you can take what you need and it's beautiful and it's really interestingly done and i really like what the vibe is but it could be said to be a bit on the preachy side. And, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I think it's good that they've took a strong moral stance and the development studio know what message they've got. They, they want their game to have and they're sticking with it. And that's very cool. And I'm in favour of it. But I can kind of see how it got them some negative reviews. Pro that and price it at 54 quid, at 55 quid. And yeah, I can I can totally see why people are like, oh, you know, it's a bit pissing me off a bit. But gameplay-wise, bouncing around, being a little, being a little ninja, being a little ninja, ninja squirrel cat man. And just getting involved in shit is a lot of fun. And, you know, when you run and you're going all fours, which is cool. And there's all this stuff to do with factions. And not, it's not, I thought I would roll my eyes a bit when I first saw the factions. I was like, oh, two factions fighting against each other. But really, it's just like picking an allegiance at the start and just trying to run with it, which is fine. Um, yeah, the combat, the combat doesn't feel as, see, this is the thing. It doesn't feel, there's, there you go, there's a car. It gives you an idea of how tall I am. Look at that. Found some shit. I found a hat in the car. Cool. Cool. Which also, the fact that there's all this stuff in the cars and stuff lying around does lead me to think it's not been that long since the animals took over because everything would have been fucking looted, right? A um, couple of flashbacks in the game don't like as well. But anyway, the combat, I'm getting distracted by the game. The combat in the game, it doesn't feel as solid as it would and it's quite hard. And enemies don't flash when they're about to shoot you and stuff. You have to literally pay attention to their movements and work it out for yourself. I would say the combat is a bit deeper than it appears to be. Like, you, you, at first glance, it appears to be not very deep. But as you go through, you start realising there's a lot of nuance to it and there's a lot of time when it's the right thing to use your gun, the right time to switch to magic and the right time to switch to martial arts. There's definitely more to it than you think. Exactly the same as Kingdoms of Amalar, where it's not just about bashing, it's about the right kind of bashing. And it's about, about learning your skills and learning what you want to do with those skills. And look, it's just like, this is an old human house, like, I guess. Maybe the door seems a bit low, I don't know. Anyway, and now they're, they're like, there's got a pot in the middle and people are chilling out and you just, this little town's like, everyone's friendly and they'll talk to you and stuff. It's all made of old shit and it's cool. And look, that guy there, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a smelty man. Look, oh, look at that animation. You walk close to the fire and you warm your hands. So fucking cute. But again, not, not, not 
cute to the point where it's like annoying and that's the theme right they've chosen a vibrant visual setting which is a which i find adorable and i find very homely and where i said multiple times over the years king of Zamala is a game that i could just probably just play forever i could just go through it just keep playing it forever i feel like this is kind of the same i'm happy in this world i don't really much care what i'm doing in the world i'm just like even in the whole of this video i've been down a fight i'm just running around looking at stuff and i'm really happy in this world and it's nice and, and i feel like i can get to know it and bask in it and they've already done a few patches and i feel like it's getting better all the time and yeah i'm uh i'm on board as fuck with it look at this fucking air balloon look an air balloon where the crafting table is why i don't know i can modify this blade if i wanted to I can, I can change the, I can change the material look oh, i'm gonna scrap to do i need to get more i seriously need more scrap but you can change the components this is made of and change the uh the handle out for a bat for a baseball bat or the base out for a banana I actually did that once uh, and yeah you can just and then this one side you can do your armor like uh i've got my like my head here I can have some changes and i can do some stuff there all in all it's very cool and i like all of it so yeah that's uh my thoughts. I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to, I've been streaming it a lot. So if you want to tune into tv.hexdsr.co.uk most evenings, I can be found streaming it, uh, at least for the foreseeable future, I guess. But I'm not playing Monster half the week. Buy me the other half. I'm a diverse streamer. Yeah. And again, the stream, if you hang out on tv.hexdsr.co.uk, you'll see that the streams are very casual. And I'm not trying to do that streamer thing. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to put on a show. I'm just chilling out, chatting to my mates and playing my game. And if people in chat are there, cool. If not, it's no problem. Um, it's not the kind of vibe you get on Twitch. It's it's totally different to that. And one of the reasons I left Twitch was because I don't want to perform anymore. I just want to hang out with my buddies. And if I want to, I want to share that, right? And that's that's something that you can't really do. On, you know, you feel like you're pushed in a different way on Twitch with people subscribing and giving you bits and stuff. And that's lovely. I, I appreciate people doing that. So patreoncom slash xdsl or my wish list under each video. Um, but the uh, the also means that you feel like you you owe them. So you feel like you're performing a little bit, and you have to. And there's there's an understanding that there's a show going on on Twitch where I don't want to do that. But anyway, I'm diversing massively from the game. Look at this. Look at this fucking world. It reminds me, yeah, it's like Kingdoms of Amalar set in the world of Rage. Remember Rage? It's kind of, I kind of feel like it's that. It's all sorts of things, but yeah, the Amalar vibes, I think, that sticks out the most to me. Um, just from a combination of, of the pacing of the game and the combat and the way spread out of the world and slowly, slowly get more stuff and get more understanding definitely that vibe so if you like that i think you'll love this the fact it's not grim and it's science fiction and like the little like he goes down toward fours look at his ears go back oh it's so fucking cute it's just perfect it's just basically a perfect game for me i really like it but uh for 55 pound i'm sure people is expecting more depth or or better graphics or you know they're expecting more of stuff for 55 pound which is why i think they have far less negative reviews if they priced it at 35 that seems like i bet they would have sold more copies i bet they would have made more money by setting it cheaper but I'm not an expert businessman, so I literally don't know. I can't jump through that top line. That's good. Attention to detail. I'm on the roof there. I'm on the fucking roof. Chill out. And I refuse for any reason to use fast travel because fast travel is bad game design. Say it with me. Fast travel, bad game design. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to go now because I could ramble all night. I'm actually just going to go and stream it and just do some more rambling. It's an army man look. Army man is serious, super serious. Oh, I should also say the character classes uh are great character classes are interesting and they're really just a starting point and it seems like you can build in any direction regardless of what class you start with but i don't know that for sure because i haven't tried it um and yeah runs fine in proton run fine not platinum but certainly runs good in proton and if you've got geforce now it's on there and yep works fine in geforce now it's yep absolutely fine absolutely cool um and you should try it out so thank you for watching my i don't know ted talk i guess and uh, this has been by mutant goodbye everyone i already mentioned patreon.com slash hexdsl i already mentioned the amazon wish list which is linked below this video uh, i like setting gifts it entertains me and i appreciate it so it's my birthday next sunday on the 20th you should probably send me gifts i'm just saying <laughs> goodbye everyone